Cernomelia, or the mermaid syndrome, is one of the most rarest disorders known to man. It has been estimated around 4 to 6 children who have been able to survive this condition. From those who have survived this deformity, it's easy to say why it's called Cernomelia. It's because the lower limbs are fused together to give the resemblance of a siren. Now the problem with this fusion is that the internal vascular structure of the individual is drastically altered in a unique intertwined manner. As you can see here, the vascular structures are interconnected in a unique way which, which acts like one whole group of blood vessels. There are seven types of cernomelia based on the severity of the malformation. In Milder's case, which is type 1, the bones of each leg are present and the fusion only affects the superficial tissues. But in the most severe cases, only one bone is observed with no indication of legs or feet. Shala Poppins is one of the very few children who have been able to survive this severe deformity. Shala was diagnosed with type 3 cyanomelia, and inside her was only 6 inches of large intestine. She has no rectum, no vagina, no bladder, and one ovary. Also, she has only one quarter of a kidney. This unique anatomy gives us clues that the origin of this deformation is not just a fusion of the two legs. Even the internal organs are affected, which suggests that this deformation is rooted to an early embryonic development. Gastrulation is one of the most important parts of early embryonic development. It is the process where a single layered structure known as a blastula is transformed into a three layered structure known as a gastrula the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. The mesoderm is a middle layer. This is a layer that later forms the skeletal muscle, the skeletal bones, internal organs, as well as the circulatory system. When looking at the structure of the deformations in a cyanomelia patient, it suggests to us that the defects have an origin in the caudal region of the mesoderm during the late part of the gastrulation period. The exact molecular defect for cyanomelia is still unknown. However, there are certain studies that suggest that teratogenic factors such as genetic mutations and other toxic substances that could have entered the body during pregnancy can cause cyanomelia. So what we suspect here is that these teratogenic factors, they affect the development of the mesoderm during gastrulation, which in turn causes the severe abnormalities of the lower part which we've seen today. We hope this video brought to light this great condition and how abnormal gastrulation can cause it. Thank you for watching and goodbye. It's hard to just to decide what you want to be when you grow up. You're the best swimmer I know. There's so many choices. Yay! An actress or a princess. Anything I want to be. Anything I want to be.